travel back to 2015 through 2016, a lot of us, we were all friends, you know, a lot of the, what we would call the NATO left, the, you know, the, the left that's still fine with the Democratic Party and us people who are more, you know, post-duopoly, we were all holding hands. We were all, you know, chanting together for the Bernie Sanders um, industrial complex. But it feels like um, politics uh, or, you know, current events has pushed American population or American political thought more left. It's keep moving left. But the Bernie Sanders industrial complex stayed in one place without moving. So the most radical Bernie Sanders industrial complex back in 2015 is no longer the most radical. They're now to the right of a lot of us. So my question to you, Shama, is how would you describe uh, the strategy of the AOCs, the squad of getting elected and what they said they were going to do when they were campaigning for their first campaign? Like, how would you describe the Justice Democrat uh, strategy? What sort of damage has it done to uh, the left? So uh, first of all, as you said, the Justice Democrats in talking about their the fundraising debacle they're having and having to lay off their staff. And I think somebody, some really um, prominent guy from their from their organization has left. And so they're they're obviously in decline. And it's also not surprising that that's happening because the whole point, at, at least for, as far as the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of working people who might have been interested in the Justice Democrats project was to provide um, some sort of leadership on the left within the Democratic Party. I mean, obviously, we have disagreement about trying to do it within the Democratic Party, but I think there are many genuine people who had faith in, I'm talking about ordinary people, I'm not talking about right. the, the elected officials or the top bureaucrats of any of these outfits. But my point is that the idea behind such projects like the Justice Democrats was a genuine searching for an alternative to the corporate politics that is on offer from the Democratic Party. But what we're seeing is that that approach of just trying to uh, do it in a very minimal sense and, and from and most importantly from inside the Democratic Party is not working. I mean, AOC is their flagship candidate and look where she is. You know, she uh, unfortunately, even Bernie, as I said, as I said before, you know, it's it's really unfortunate and shameful that he endorsed Biden within hours of Biden Biden announcing his presidential campaign, uh, and we've now seen AOC also endorse him uh, without any demands, without any criticism of where things are. And of course, how can she? Because she's been complicit. She's been party to a lot of what has happened in Washington D.C. And so. Uh, I think the what 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 our job is on the left is to explain that the reason the Justice Democrats have have had experienced this debacle is not about any specific organizational detail. While there may be such things, it's about the whole idea, the whole concept that this can be mm -hmm. done in this way. It can't be done in this way, and that is why you know I think. Uh, one of the most important points we have to make, and Socialist Alternative and I are certainly making this point, even in our inaugural article about the Cornell West campaign, is that one of the things that uh, that the Cornell West campaign uh, had the the potential uh, aspects of potential it has. I'm not saying that it's a given. We have to fight to make it happen. But the potential it has is what the is the potential that exist actually existed actually when Bernie ran in 2016 as well, but didn't happen. Uh, I big, big, and most predominantly because he didn't agree with us at all on the on this question, is can we build an independent political organization for the working class coming out of this campaign? That is the most important question that comes to our mind uh, in relation to the Cornell, Cornell West campaign. So that means both what is the strategy we use to run this campaign and also what is the vision we are providing for after that campaign ends, you know, that that has be those two questions have to be the predominant questions. And already we've seen how much impact it has, you know, the, the hunger for this type of politics is mm -hmm. so huge. It is not, it is not as Anderson Cooper or whoever else in the mainstream media might want to believe and might claim that it's some fringe lefty podcast. No, the hunger for yeah. an alternative 
to the dangerous right populism of Donald Trump and also the, the extremely reactionary politics of DeSantis or anyone else from the Republican Party and the corporate agenda of the Biden regime and the Democratic Party, the hunger for an alternative to both these two things is wide and it's massive and it runs mm -hmm. deep. And uh, you can see the examples of what I'm saying. You know, within two weeks of Cornell West announcing his candidacy, 19 million people had viewed his campaign, uh, you know, video announcement wow. review. Those are huge numbers. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you, you know, somebody with not even a modicum of honesty would not, you know, only such a person would not admit what that represents. I mean, this is huge. So the potential is really big. Uh, but it, whether their potential is realized or not, that's the question for the left. Yeah, a lot of people got to realize uh, that the Justice Democrats was also uh, are also fraudulent because based on what they told us, and Savvy Sabs, our revolutionary blackout sister, she does a good job highlighting this. Uh, part of the Justice Democrat plan was to make third parties and independent candidates more viable. The Justice Democrat was supposed to be a movement that promoted third parties and wide scale electoral reform because there's no reason to engage in electoral politics without that being your primary goal because we know the system is rigged. And this is the uh, receipt where they said they had to make an effort to make third party and independent candidates more viable. Now, this is why I say there should be a lot more anger at the Justice Democrat organization, a lot of the progressives, because they committed fraud on the working class. Like, so it's not like the working class, and this is something I've been trying to learn to forgive myself more, right, for falling for this. Because I'm like, how can you fall for AOC? How, how we fall for AOC and Bernie? It wasn't that we was 100% full. I mean, we could have foolish intentions, but we wasn't 100% fools because a lot of people were saying stuff like, we need to be one-term Congress people, the way AOC was saying. Yes, that's it's true. not like we was misguided. These people committed fraud on us. So we need to forgive us more and be more angry at them. That's why I, I kind of yeah, laughed at the Go ahead, Shama. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no. I was just going to say, no, absolutely. We wouldn't be, it would be wrong of us to be uh, angry at or criticize or condescend to ordinary people who put their faith in, in the Bernie campaign. Absolutely not. That was not wrong at all. Uh, and a socialist alternatives approach to the Bernie campaign is actually a good example of how left leadership should be provided is in the sense that we went all in for Bernie's campaign. You know, we campaigned for him wherever we have our members. And uh, we were emphatic about our support for his campaign agenda, as I said, uh, you know, for uh, taxing Wall Street, for Medicare for all, or canceling student debt, all of that. But we were also very clear that there is no way that the Democratic establishment would allow this, the DNC would allow this agenda to dominate in their party, that you cannot, well, you know, one of the things we said is you can, cannot have a political revolution against the billionaire class from inside a party that is controlled by those very same powerful individuals and so and, and their agenda uh, and with the political representatives doggedly uh, representing their interests, the interests of the wealthy. And so we were also very clear about that at that same moment. So I think that's the kind of clarity and honesty we need in on the left. It's not very much on offer, unfortunately. And um, one of the things I think the, the the comment that you showed from Sabi, I think that also reminds us a very important component of what we are talking about. When we say we need a political new political organization, a new political party for the working class, uh, we are also talking about a political organization that is uh, that that offers serious analysis and organizational methods that not only go. Uh, that, not, that not only outlast electoral campaigns, but go well beyond electoral politics in the first place. You know, that we're, it's not a, we're not an organization that is simply uh, an electoral machine, except it's separate from the Democratic Party and it's slightly better with better demands. And, you know, yes, all of that would be good, but we're not talking about something limited like that. We're talking about something really important that is a sole necessity. I mean, just to give you an illustration of why such an organization is needed you know an organization that is of course runs candidates holds those candidates accountable mm -hmm. unlike the way DS, dsa leadership has not been able to hold the squad accountable yes all of that is true 
uh, and it should be a democratic organization where who runs, who the candidate is, what the campaign program is, which ele elections we should run in, all of that is democratically decided by the membership through debate and discussion. But aside from that, or in addition to that, it should be an organization that is immersed in the struggles of the working class, struggles mm -hmm. of the people. So, so just to give a very important illustration, inside the labor movement, what are we seeing? We are seeing a real hunger for militancy and class struggle unionism, but that is not really on offer from the labor leadership. And so where do these rank and file go? What is the organizing on offer for them? So if you're if you're one teamster somewhere who wants a better contract, uh, or if you're a Starbucks worker who, who is trying to understand what, what happened, what is the debacle of this whole unionizing drive? How, how can we win power for workers? How can we win union drives? How can we win fighting contracts? How can we go on strike? How should these strikes be uh, extremely well prepared? All, none of these questions are actually being discussed by big sections of the labor leadership because they are, you know, for decades have been married to what I would call business unionism. And so for all of these questions to be discussed in real depth where me union members and non-union workers can come together and discuss and find a political home for themselves, all of this is, uh, you know, th th this is what we're talking about when we say a new political organization.